Hey, welcome to Trapping Inc. I'm Rich Mellon. Well, this is the 13th show of the season. We are done for another year. And what today's show is going to be about is we're going to do a little bit of kitties. So some links, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, Fisher and Martin, a little mix and match. Some of the interesting stuff that we caught over the, over the season. Stick around. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions. The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today, the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. This is always a good sign. I'm just setting my line up, but Yesterday was a terrible day, and I never got near as far as I wanted to go, thanks to the bears and everything else, but, so I'm back on that same line, and I got across what I opened yesterday, and here we go. <laughs> Didn't take him long to find it. Oh, and is he pretty. Oh my goodness. What a beautiful, beautiful fisher. Look at that color. Of course, it is so warm. I don't have uh, any problem pulling that off. 120 Belial, man, that is a money. This is a great little, a great little set here. Oh, and nothing got the bait. Bait's still in there with my patent pending uh, bait screen. <laughs> <laughs> I do really good on, on Fisher here. Never got a Martin here, but on the Fisher, it's been awesome. And what we've got here is, of course, is just a, a low spot. This is the kind of stuff I like. There's a lake just out back there. And kind of area that, that, that Fisher like to travel through. There's a, a few spruce in that for the occasional squirrel, but I think they're mostly after the, the voles and, the, and that kind of stuff. Well, we'll get this guy flipped out, get this set back up again, and get on it. Man, this is great. All right. First set on a, a 39K run here. I got to get going. Get moving. Hey, this is my first, uh, <laughs> first animal with my new lure. Especially vile stuff that I made up. <laughs> I rotted down a bunch of things and uh, and added uh, a bunch of skunk to it. But look at that. He is so glorious. I don't know. To me, there's nothing prettier than a fisher. And I got to tell you, that uh, old Fudd, he'll agree with you. <laughs> Fudd just loves the fisher. Yeah. Pretty young one. Juvenile, I'd say, but... Won't know till I get a look at the skull. Get this pop back in here. This is always a good spot, this one. Of course, a lot of the early season stuff, you're, uh, you're nailing a, a, the locals 
bait was what I like to call them. And they're gonna find anything new in their, in their area right away, right? They're gonna be first to, first in there and when something new shows up. There we go. And then we get a couple times during the year when they, uh, when we have uh, little bits of mi migrations and also we get in on those. This actually feels warm. I can feel the warmth on its belly. This hasn't happened very long ago. And if I looked around, I would probably see, yes, there we go, foot tracks coming right up. <laughs> Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Helfords, unique beyond compare. Helfordsmailorder.com. Belial Traps, first in the forest. BelialTrap.com. And by Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine, Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. Alfred's new showroom is now open and the shelves are full. We have all the gear you need for the upcoming season and it's all in stock now. Snaring coyotes? We got you covered. We have pre-made snares for free hanging and power ramps, snare making kits, as well as swagers, ferrules, cables and locks to make your own snares. We have pallets of snare cable of every size and type. We have support wire and tie wire. We have certified body grips by all the major manufacturers in all sizes and applications, as well as setters and safeties and trap boxes and trap supports and trap dies and treatments. If footholding is your game, we have exactly the foothold traps you need in every brand and size, from muskrat to wolf. For fur put up, we have a huge selection of skinning knives, both flat and round fleshing beams, and forming boards and the best fleshing tools available. Halfords has got you covered, no matter what your species. Demand has been huge for years, so you better come in before the best selection is gone. Halfords, built on the traditions of honesty, integrity, and service. All right, here's one of my favorite fisher spots. You got these um, black spruce and tamarack muskegs. Once you, you come up out of that, then you usually got some sort of a ridge here. And this is one of them spots that always produces for me every year. Oh man, look at the size of this guy. Been dead a little bit longer. Nice big one though, huh? 120 Belial, look at that. 120 Belial just kills them like nothing. Uh, this isn't as big big enough to be called a bullfisher yet, but he certainly uh, is is a solid 10 pound fish or something like that. And up into my little box. Did he get my bait? I don't think so. Nope, there it is. All right, well, let's get him out of here. Get down the trail. I can't believe overnight two of them. Normally I can't get away with this. They're frozen to the trap. But that is a beauty. Gotta be 10, 11 pounds. Look at that. Early season stole. It's beautiful out here. We're very, we're in the first week of Martin and Fisher. So why an Argo on the trap line? That sums it all up. You can imagine half of that down the back of your neck or all over you, how wet you'd be at this moment. I'm not, I'm nice and dry. I haven't even put a coat on yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> we got a trap gone. I don't see it hanging nowhere. Oh, there it is right here. Oh, a nice fisher. Beauty. So interesting. Uh, really solid catch. But the, uh, the anchor came off the tree. Maybe it wasn't a big nail or maybe it was just a little bit of rotten bark or something. But anyway. What a beautiful, beautiful fisher that is. Yeah, I have to, I have to own up here. This is operator error. <laughs> when I hung the trap, it was like, oh gee, that's a cheesy little nail and <laughs> I'll fix it up later. And <laughs> I didn't, so we will oh. fix it up now. I guarantee you that. Yep, we got lots of nails with this for sure. But this, what a great catch he was. It's yep. perfect, good deal. Did the job. Yep. 
here in the back. And now for Halford's Trapper's Tip of the Week. Okay, what's the best Martin Fisher box? Just about the biggest argument since Ford and Chevy. There are two schools of thought. The long box and the short box. Long box people say, well, it's really easy, then you have a bait chamber, which is great. No, no doubt about it. Having a bait chamber is awesome. They also, the long box people say that because these animals are, are weasels and they, they are programmed to search out inside of uh, holes and crevices and tunnels and all that, that they like, they like the long box, that they're, they're much more comfortable. And that's why the trap is set so far back in here, is that they're already committed into the box. I don't know. I have, I have a bunch of both of them. Either this style or this style. And the reason being is because I can haul so many more of them. Uh, matter of fact, I mean, these are designed just to be like this. I can, I can, prob I can haul at least twice as many as I could of, of square boxes of the same size. The plastic ones fit even tighter. The plastic ones here, I could probably put a half a dozen in this height. Uh, advantages and disadvantages, the plastic ones, the bears can knock it off the tree a hundred times and you can pick it up and put it back on. These will get tore apart eventually. Both of them have the disadvantage of not having the bait chamber. This one here I have some screen on the back side. But what I do instead of the bait chamber is I just use a piece of, of uh, screen. I put my bait in there and I take and shove this over top of it, holds it in place. The screen stops me from losing my bait probably 80% of the time. Works good. Plastic wood, long, short, you're never going to have enough. That was Halford's Trapper's Tip of the Week. Man, that smells good. <laughs> well, it's about ready, so we what do we have? have a chair. Well, I think we eat better out here than we do at home. <laughs> we're going to have, um, they're kind of like um, something you'd get at a fast food place. It's a, <laughs> a biscuit, some bacon, eggs, and oh, yeah. processed cheese. The good stuff. The good stuff. And after we have a great breakfast, then we have to head out and do our, uh, our last day check. So what have we got? About 30 Fisher Martin sets that we got to check today. Yeah. And then we have to put in some kitty, kitty snares as well. Right? Excellent. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, after a good breakfast, it shall all begin. Can't forget the incredible lynx lure. This uh, front rack, it's a new option on the, on the brand new Outfitter model here from Argo. And it is the handiest thing since sliced bread. You can see I got my chainsaw up front here because when I need a chainsaw, when we're cutting trail or whatever, where do I need it? I need it at the front. I don't need it around back. I don't need it in the, in, inside. I need it up front. So this is, it's awesome that way. I keep uh, all the tools that I use so much of. Uh, you know, there's uh, the big old Puma machete, spare traps, a hammer, and more importantly, my homemade lure. <laughs> That's where I like to have it too, is outside. <laughs> Sandy, I see, I think that it should be kept inside in, in the heat because we have a heated cabin this, so that it, it never freezes. She don't believe in that. Now, I don't know what you guys think, but also a little bit of, uh, a little bit of spare bait up here. All complete. It's become a, uh, like the ultimate uh, work toolbox for me, and, and I'm, I'm really pleased. Brand new option this year for Argo, the front rack. This is the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. As I was coming up, I watched the snow get knocked off of the tree as he hit it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I'm going to just help finish this cat and... Uh, they can pick up and, and clean up here. This is unbelievable. Well, wasn't that something? I've uh, never had that happen before. I was literally right there and all of a sudden I see snow come flying off the tree here. And I'm thinking, what on earth is causing that? You know, and I knew I had a, a pen coming up here pretty quick. I'm not sure where I said this last weekend. And it was uh, the cat. And it was just breathing its last. It uh, 
had managed to get a stick in between the uh, the snare and, and and its neck. So that was the only reason why it was still alive after 15 seconds. But there we go. I think it's a female, pretty nice female. She's 20, 20, 21 pounds. All right, that is nicely rebuilt. Show you some of the things that I think are important on a snare pin. For one thing, we use as much of natural blocking as we can. You notice the branches on the trees back there? Uh, I've just left them and allowed them to be there. Uh, that way I don't have to fill any more than, than necessary. The stuff that I've put is extremely lightweight. It's not going to stop anything. And uh, I think the cat knows that. I think that it's comfortable with uh, that fact. Once again, when we look through here at the cat's eye view, he looks straight at that lure, and that's what we've got him focused on. You'll notice that that, that lure stick is actually sloped, pointed towards the snare. Uh, seems to work better for me than, than having uh, one just standing straight up and down in there. There's lots of... Uh, Lots of things that I, I think about when I build these, uh, you know, a couple of, uh, of them are is set on sign. And I did here, there was, there was uh, definitely a cat sign here set on, on junctions, you know, once again, here we go. There's cut line that way, cut line that way, cut line that way. And of course the way I came, you know, cats are no different than, than us. They, they uh, follow those, uh, the, those main thoroughfares and intersections have a tendency to to uh, focus them. Look at this big fit footed old cat. Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. ArgoUTV.com Puma Knives. Knife maker to the world since 1786. And by Carl Zeiss Sport Optics, we make it visible. Gentech-intl.com Alfred's new showroom is now open and the shelves are full. We have all the gear you need for the upcoming season and it's all in stock now. Snaring coyotes? We got you covered. We have pre-made snares for free hanging and power ramps, snare making kits, as well as swagers, ferrules, cables and locks to make your own snares. We have pallets of snare cable of every size and type. We have support wire and tie wire. We have certified body grips by all the major manufacturers in all sizes and applications, as well as setters and safeties and trap boxes and trap supports and trap dies and treatments. If footholding is your game, we have exactly the foothold traps you need in every brand and size, from muskrat to wolf. For fur put up, we have a huge selection of skinning knives, both flat and round fleshing beams, and forming boards and the best fleshing tools available. Halfords has got you covered, no matter what your species. Demand has been huge for years, so you better come in before the best selection is gone. Halfords, built on the traditions of honesty, integrity, and service. It's definitely like a... Oh, she's not that not been here very long. Last night. Last night. Perfect. But I would say a uh, female, juvenile female. In 160. Yeah. And a perfect catch again. Yeah. Absolutely perfect catch. Oh, how pretty. How pretty. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Let's uh, get her changed out here. And the bait's still there. This is one of those... Those uh, open-ended boxes that you've got here. Yeah. So there sits all that, as you say, yummy. The beautiful yellow stuff. <laughs> the whole idea behind this, the fella that uh, I learned this from, uh, fella from BC, Ron, I think his name is. Anyway, his whole idea about having the open here is for birds to get at it and that the birds fussing and, and carrying on attracts predators, which is true. When we're coyote hunting or whatever, I mean, if you get predators or get birds coming in, then then, then the predators come. But uh, I don't know. Well, and it's kind of flow through too, you know, in terms of air or wind or whatever. Yeah, I don't think that that's as important. I'm not sure about the visual. The visual might be important. I'm not sure, but I'll get another trap. So this is just a tip on what to do with your fur once you've caught it. 
once they're in the trap and they're dead, there's not much more mo a mother nature can do to maximize the quality of the fur. Now it's up to you as the trapper to make sure that you do all you can to protect the fur. So these fisher were frozen solid when we got to them in the trap and so we've just hung them the way they were. Um, up a little higher because Fuddy likes to sniff them all the time. The, the lynx, when we found them, they weren't frozen yet. So in order to protect them from green belly, what we did was we hung them by their hind foot. And that way, if they are, when they're still not frozen, that means that their guts and whatnot kind of go up into their chest cavity and protect them from getting green belly. So it's just some things to watch out for when you are out there in the field. And, and for us here, we don't do a lot of our skinning and whatnot out here, we take them home. But it, make sure that your fur is gonna last and get the best quality. Today is February 14th, Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's, babe. <laughs> Sandy's holding down the, the fort today with the, with the pups. It's a pretty cool day. But more importantly, tomorrow is the last day of lynx. So I'm the, shutting down my lynx line today. I'm, uh, I have 91 pens out. I was not a year for, for blind snaring hardly at all. Um, I did set a few blind snares around uh, the side of some pens and that, but that's it. There was nothing on the trails and that. So I'm here setting um, them down, uh, shutting them down. We'll see what my final count is. I was at 15 this morning when I started. And here we go with number 16. And he is a pretty cat, or she, uh, in the last day or so. Um, it snowed two nights ago, so since the snow, he's found it and he's done what a cat usually does. There's not a big struggle, it's, it's all over with quickly. But as I shut it down today, we're going to talk about what's important when it comes to setting up pens and where we set pens. And on this one, first thing right off, we're headed right into a swamp area. I'm on the west side of this swamp, and of course you have all this, this heavy under for, um, undergrowth and everything, and this, this is what supports rabbits. So one of the places that we set on when we choose this stuff is we choose habitat. Let's get this guy out of here and into a bag. For me, de decommissioning snares is a pretty easy deal. All I do is just close them. I don't bother removing them. Um, I'm kind of remote and nobody is ever out where I'm at. I have never had anybody monkey with any of them. So for me, it's just a matter of taking my snare and closing it up so that it can't ever catch anything. And then I like to shove it over top of a, a branch or a piece of wood or whatever so that it, it's obvious that it's decommissioned. Other than that, I leave it like this. Uh, some of these sticks will, will fall down over the summertime and I'll have to set them up again come link season but I'm looking forward to that already <laughs> all right well we'll just give these a little bit of a trim off here don't need that much leg there we go trim them off let them dry a little bit and turn them over well that is it second season of trapping ink is in the bag and all done. I hope you enjoyed today's show and I hope you enjoyed the whole season as much as we did bringing it all to you. And remember, we'll see you out on the line. You can keep up with all the action at trappinginc.com or join our Facebook and YouTube sites.